Welcome back, episode 21 of Revisit It, and I didn't, I didn't want to do this. Um, this kid won a bet during the, the Ink Persona 5 epic we did, so he got to pick the next video, and he picked Mother's Basements. Uh, what is it even called? Uh, ReZero the Masterpiece, You Fight Me. Um, and the is, is ReZero is a masterpiece. I am really getting tired of seeing all these YouTubers that say, you know, it's a masterpiece, the genius of blah, 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 blah. You're just putting more, like, um, weight behind your analysis video and the thing you're analyzing. Yeah, so you got to come with all guns, just a blazing in order for me to, in order to convince me that this is a masterpiece as you're claiming. And... And it's not. <laughs> and it's, uh, that's the thing. Like, if you just go, I, you, people could literally just go, I really like Hunter Hunter, and this is why you should too. And I would like, that, well, that tells you, you everything. Like, okay, we could talk about this, why he likes it, and critique that, but something like, some, this is genius, that's a hard, provable thing that you need to prove in order to make that claim. I uh, follow a YouTuber named Sean who said that at some point, you go from speculation, which is a lot of analysis video, they're just analyzing and speculating the themes of what a person meant, unless they outright state it. You go from speculation to declaration. And X is a masterpiece, is a declaration. And as such, you open yourself even wider to criticism like this. Um, so, Mother's Basement, uh, I know of him, but I have never watched more than legitimately 17 seconds of his content. I poke my head in every now and again. He he had ties with two, uh, two best friends back in the day, so I will always look like, oh yeah, I'll check out a video every now and again. But he's very, he is very baseline anime YouTuber. Okay. It's, it's, it's like the fairy tale of JRPGs. It's not doing anything <laughs> special. It is. <laughs> it's doing what it does. It do. Okay, let's just get into it then. ReZero means a lot to me, and to a lot of other people. Anyone who was watching okay, anime pause. that- we already- Is- is this a personal, um, a personal sort of thing, or is it a provable- is this a masterpiece to you and what you stand for and what you went through, or is it a masterpiece provably definitively? I wonder if a lot of these people are going, this is a masterpiece because of- how it feels and the emotions it elicits from me as opposed to just some type of literary masterpiece. At the same time, don't use masterpiece. Yeah. Just go, uh, ReZero made me feel a lot of things and I love it. And it's, it's just as easy. Instead of this in confrontational title. Yeah. A lot of other people. Oh, pausing again. This is another thing. Um... I don't mind if a series means a lot to you. I don't mind if a series means uh, everything to you. I don't. I don't mind if it does something for you or saves you from anything. I don't mind, um, but that does not make it good. Mm -mm, absolutely not. And, it, and and you can't implant what you felt and what it did for you personally onto the next person. You can't go, oh, I loved it and it made me feel this and it. It means a lot to me, so why don't you like it? You're wrong. That yeah, makes no sense. We talked a lot about that with Wolf, because he's a very feeling sort of dude, how it made me feel and everything. Yeah, it's, it's a very weird thing with that. I I wouldn't I wouldn't ever push that on anybody. Like, hey, this show made me feel good, and that so therefore is good, and you'll like it as well. I'm like, hey, here's the pros and cons about this show. Here's what I think about it. Maybe you should watch it. Anyone who was watching anime back in 2016 can tell you that it had the entire community in a death grip, and it never really let go. Pause. For let's, let's, we, we need to explain ourselves a little bit. Back in the day, back in 2016, this was all over the place. And I'm always just like, whenever a show is mega, mega huge, I'm always just like, eh, yeah, yeah I'll, I, I'll I, check I have it to out. give it some time. Yeah, I'll, I'll check it out, I guess, because it's super, super huge, and sometimes it's a little bit of a flop. Sometimes it holds up to scrutiny. This is one of the ones where I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll check that out. I'll check that out. Then it got a dub, and I went, okay, now I'm in because I'm, I'm a dub man. And it's a good dub studio, good dub actors, everything. Watched it. Have. Have. The first 13 episodes. First 13 episodes. I'm like, this is good to great. I'm really digging it. And in that hard episode 13 
flip happened, and I just went, okay, this is this is kind of one of the worst shows ever. <laughs> this is kind of finished. And even after that, I was like, okay, maybe he'll wake up tomorrow and realize how... No, maybe this can bounce back. And it just did. And they try so hard to make you like forget that flip to where it's just like, I'm just back to who I was with no action. And it's just like, no, this is it. Uh uh-uh. uh. And, and no. So that's how I feel. And that's it, it is a hard like, what, what did we give it? Like a two or three? I think I gave it a two. And I think you were going three. Yeah. Um, The way I feel about it is, I, I would have. I, the series probably could have turned me back to where I was if everybody had called him the f- out after he tried yeah. to come back and be just him. And they were like, no, we need to talk about what you did and what you were saying. What was wrong with you? Like, what happened there? I don't think he even offered an apology. I think it was one of those hand, half-handed Subaru po- apologies. But one of my biggest issues are just the unanswered questions. And I understand that it's an ongoing thing. It's a light novel. It's season two. But you don't make 26 episodes and put all of these questions in and just go, okay, wait five years for the answer. Years after its only season, its waifus are still top tier. Weebs still quote it endlessly. And they're still selling figures by the truckload. As is the case with anything that popular, ReZero has its share of detractors, too. It's faced a barrage of criticism to match the praise supporting it, and through that discourse, the anime community at large seems to have reached a middle ground conclusion about the series. Gigax summed up the apparent consensus fairly concisely in the title of his video, ReZero is no masterpiece, but it's still damn entertaining, where he argues that the show has a neat high concept and its shocking moments and impressive production values make for a thrilling ride, but a lack of weight behind its characters and themes makes it ring a little hollow. I am so tired of weight behind characters. I am so tired about weight behind themes. Mm-hmm. You, people... You don't, you don't need it. People put way too much into a series that is literally a dude that dies and wakes up in a in fantasy world. Yeah, and again, themes can be whatever you, you put them on today. It could be the theme of rebirth redemption uh sacrifice it could be any of those themes and you could just go yep this and and have all these points to prove it does that make the series better was that authorial intent for the themes to be in there and all three of those to be there at the exact same time for three separate people who knows but that does not make it good and i'm so sick of it and also giga's video it's it's just like well i don't need to see the the video now i got everything i needed from that title mm-hmm. but I, I i i appreciate those titles yeah. more because those are the type of good clickbait titles where it's like he's told me everything i need to know in the title and it's up to me to click it to hey i want to see you yeah yeah he, he goes it's not a masterpiece but it's entertaining that means that it's he for based upon that title and not seeing it at all and what um uh, who is this dude? Mother's Basement said it's um he thinks that it's not very good, but it's entertaining, and it's just like yep, that's um that's pretty much where it is, and I can see I I, I wouldn't have an argument to go it's entertaining. Mm-hmm. Said and done. In case the title of this video didn't give it away, I disagree with that sentiment quite strongly particularly the part about ReZero having weak characters and no overarching point. For as much love as the anime... Things don't need an overarching point. I'm going to say this right now. Things can just exist. No, I love slice of life shows so much. It's one of it's. It, it, whenever I look for something new, I always go slice of life, comedy, school first before action, uh, drama, horror, whatever. Because I just like seeing characters do things. That's all. Doesn't need to be any more than that. Doesn't need to be any overarching, uh, world saving themes, rebirth, redemption. None of that. I just need people. I like doing things. Characters and no overarching point. For as much love as the anime community has heaped upon this series, I still think it's being sold short. Way short. And I can see why. It is a very popular, overtly edgy entry in a trendy and oversaturated subgenre that's not exactly known for its substance. Its lead, Subaru, bears a striking resemblance to... Well, take your pick of isekai heroes, really. His design intentionally evokes the everyman protag-kun common in these stories, and... I really like his design. Not not his hair, but I love the white, black, and orange. Mm-hmm. I think it's really, really good. Okay. That's all. 
certain audience expectations. Some of which are then. Oh my god, are we really about to say subverting <laughs> expectations? He, he said, some of which are, and I went, mm, here it comes. Dude. Here comes that cannon. <laughs> my, I do not, I have never seen. Um, I have seen Sword Art Online. The other two he showed, Did I don't you? know. Yeah, yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, it's it's not good. Um, I watch, but that was back. When, that was one of those. This is super popular. Know. Let me try I it out. Gotta know. And it's just not. It's not for me. I, I don't know if it. I'll say. Um, Attack on Titan is good, but it's not for me. Sword Art Online is not good, and it's not for me. Mm-hmm. So the other two heroes, I have no expectations of what to expect from a hero that gets uh, put into a fantasy world because I've only got one example of it. So no, it didn't play to my expectations of anything because I expected nothing. I don't go into a series expecting a character to act X way just Mm -hmm. based on what I've seen before. I don't go into every JoJo's part like, hey, this JoJo's is going to act this way. And then when they don't, it goes subverted. Wow. No. It, it, they're all unique characters. If there was a character that was more of a shut in and versus a character more of an extrovert and they both got put into a world like this, it they would act totally different ways. So you can say that your expectations were subverted with a person who is thrown into a different world is supposed to act this way and each both each one of them acts a different way. Expectations subverted, are they both good? certain audience expectations, some of which are then subverted when he and everyone around him start dying horribly and time starts looping. Why is that subverted? Yeah, no. I, he, he's supposed to act like these other characters, but that's subverted because he's dying? How does that make sense? Uh, is this... Maybe, maybe that wasn't the point. Let me hear all of that again. To... Well, take your pick of isekai heroes, really. His design intentionally evokes the everyman protag kun common in these stories, and that creates certain audience expectations, some of which are then subverted when he and everyone around him start dying horribly and time starts looping, but the show still- Huh? Okay, I, he, so you expect him to act a certain way, and then he dies. That, that means- yeah. I don't know what you mean, dude. Unless you mean that- He's supposed to be the strong every man that saves everybody, but here he is dying. But that I, no, these I think you mean these stories are supposed to go a certain way, and these characters are supposed to act a certain way, and when when they don't, that's subversion. How are the story supposed to go? Dude comes into another world. Um, he has some sort of innate ability, and he hmm. isn't that exactly what's <laughs> yes. happening. Because I, I was quoting uh, Shield Hero and Konosuba, and I guess doesn't isn't um, Kirito pretty good in Sword Art? Yes, okay, absolutely then. good. Uh, then I don't know. I actually don't know. <laughs> Still leaves a general first impression that it's probably not that deep. And if you believe that, you might never even think to. D- this is very much the Hunter Hunter argument. You start out the series and it just seems like a typical, okay, whatever, Shonen series and it's not that deep and then it goes into darkness and then all of a sudden it's deep. This is very much the exact same thing. Yeah, I, I don't understand this whole deep thing. Does it make sense? I, I am, Can I look, sit down and look at a story and go, wow, that was bad. And then someone goes, actually it was pretty deep because of this, this, and this, this. I'm like, okay, that's, now it's good? Or does the story and characters are still, does not make sense and still inconsistent? Not, Those don't change no matter how deep it is. Now, I can understand when it's like something historical and you go, this character is this way because of the actual history of that character mm-hmm. that you don't know unless you actually know you like there's nuances in that character that you don't understand unless you know that thing over there but you're just adding your own thing unless the author explicitly says the only thing is that people are reading things everything when it comes to themes and such and such unless it's explicitly stated it's all opinion this is my opinion of what the themes are and what this series has to say so that means nothing to me when you go, well, the themes are blah, 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 blah. Because yeah. you're just going, well, my opinion is such. And I'm just going, yeah, but what about the plot? Probably not that deep. 
And if you believe that, you might never even think to dig into the massive subtextual strata in which most of ReZero's narrative substance can be found. A lot of that, to be fair, isn't readily apparent on first viewing. If you haven't rewatched ReZero, you haven't really watched ReZero. But rewatching a whole 25 episode anime is a bit of a tall order. No, it's not, dude. Not nowadays. <laughs> it's it's for burn that out in two days. So I got that collar. Uh, so One Piece came on Netflix recently, and I rewatched from episode one until the end of Alabasta in like two weeks. Yeah, I, I burned through all of Bleach and Fairy Tail within like three, four months, and those are massive. Yeah, it, like twenty five episodes is not that big of an undertaking if it's a series you enjoy. Like if you're just end. if you're just reading it or rewatching it just to go, okay, I need to discover the things that make it good. I'm not. I'm not about that life, because again, that's all opinion. Even with the currently airing director's cut giving you the perfect excuse to do so. <clears throat> so to aid those of you who don't have the time, and maybe convince those of you who don't have the interest to give it another go, I'm gonna lay out my own observations and interpretations of ReZero, gleaned across multiple viewings, and make the case that it is actually kind of a masterpiece. There's no such thing as kind of a masterpiece. You're a masterpiece or you're not. You can make the argument for it to being a masterpiece. You can make the argument against it being a masterpiece. There is, that's kind of like, I'm kind of certain. Certain means 100%. You can't be kind of 100%. That makes no sense. I, I can kind of see the kind of masterpiece thing. No. Like, it's, it's, it's based upon the the characters, the plot, the story, everything, it's kind of a masterpiece. But then you, when you bring in the theme's opinion, no, that's when it becomes a masterpiece because that pushes it right over the edge a little bit. But he wouldn't go, uh, everything I've seen makes it kind of a masterpiece. Especially when his title is, it is a masterpiece. You, but that's just sort of conflating uh, words because he yes, says, Yes, he shouldn't be. Yeah, no, no, absolutely, absolutely. No, it's um, it's either kind of a masterpiece or it is a masterpiece. I don't know. There's I, no, again, I am very much. A, how can you be kind of a masterpiece? I, I, I don't understand I, it. I, I just gave what I believe to be kind of a masterpiece in his eyes, or how I could see somebody saying something is kind of a masterpiece. I can understand someone going, This is excellent, or this is um something like that and then going okay here's a bunch of themes and stuff and going wow this is a masterpiece not it's on the road to masterpiece and i need these three puzzle pieces and now it is actual mm. masterpiece I, I can see somebody be like yeah he's kind of a genius if he applied himself no he is a genius yeah he is a genius but he just doesn't apply not, himself it, but there's something that's uh, preventing him from crossing over into the genius threshold. No, no. He has all the pieces. He just needs. This is where I disagree. I, 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 I don't know what his intent is. I'm just, I'm, I'm just arguing. Your devil yes, advocate. I understand. I don't know. I'm, I'm only arguing against you, not whatever he intends to be. <laughs> um, that person is an actual genius. No matter what, they are genius. R regardless of their laziness or their uh, inability to apply themselves, they are quantifiable genius. Not kind of a genius. They are genius. They just are not applying themselves. I don't think so. so this would be this is masterpiece. Nah, I don't think so. Okay. We we can't. We, this Actually, ratio is already really bad. We can't do this. <laughs> kind of a masterpiece. Fuck you, fight me. This deep dive is okay. That's he literally just said the title, and that's not even a title. It's not. Uh, I guess is capital I S is a is a snazzier title than kind of a masterpiece. That seems kind of wishy washy. This is the definitive okay. sort then of thing. Then don't be wishy washy in your video. We we only know what we know. <laughs> This deep dive is brought to you by Bookwalker, Kadokawa's official ebook store where you can buy hundreds of English language light. Okay, we're just gonna go past this. Are we? Yeah. I would like to know about Bookwalker. Okay, fine. No! <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you doing? <laughs> don't 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 fool the bluff, kid. I'll I'll, I'll hit it off. Oh, uh, we already done. <laughs> Pretty short. <laughs> If you go into ReZero expecting yet another mechanical, plot-driven escapist adventure story about a meek young man becoming an unlikely hero and saving another world with some gore and time travel shit mixed in for fun, I mean, 
your expectations will be met. It is in part those things sometimes, but it's also a lot more, which means it's a bit too bulky to comfortably fit that mold. More generic isekai, like Wise Man's Grandchild, succeed by being easy breezy affairs, shows you can fully enjoy without having to think too much about them. They're like anime potato chips, not nourishing, but satisfying, a nice light snack between meals. And that's where I think some weebs run into trouble with ReZero, because this series is not a snack, no matter how many snacks it may contain. It is a full three course meal, plus salad and dessert. Oh, it this is another one like Nux that are just like, this show is great, this show is really good, it's doing stuff that every no no other show is doing, but you're not telling me what it's doing four minutes into it. Tell me why it is subversive. Tell me why it, you have to think about it a little bit deeper. I understand that you have to. You've already stated this. Get on with it. It is dense and heavy. It's the thing that puts you in the emotional food coma that you need the snack to recover from. And if you turn your brain off while watching it, it's going to leave you a little bored. ReZero does have a strong, elaborate, and detailed plot. It needs to. Writing good time travel stories demands a complex understanding of cause and effect. If the plot is weak, the whole concept collapses around it. But as good as it is... And herein lies the problem. Uh, the time travel stuff. Where did it come from? Uh, what are the limits? What is the reset point? We don't know these things. So when he resets to the Apple dude, and then all of a sudden he resets to the bed in the mansion, we go, well, why? There's no reason why. Why did he get that specifically? We don't know why. So we're, we have to think about these things. And when you think about them, it's automatically not a masterpiece because right now we don't have these answers. I understand season two, light novel, blah, blah, blah. I'm not deep diving into a non-translated light novel to get the answers to this 26 episode masterpiece. Is not the focus of the series. Rather, ReZero lives and dies in its characters, who are more than just appealing waifus and husbandos. They're complicated, multi layered human beings with distinctive, sometimes conflicting personalities, values, and desires. Pause. The show can. No. <laughs> no. Uh, the, the, the owner of the mansion. Give me, what about him? He's a character. Uh, uh, Beatrice, what about her? Uh, Ram, that the red hair chick one? Uh, yep. Ram, what about her? Um, anybody in the princess um, yeah, trials? Yeah, thing. Tell, what about them? You're talking about Subaru and Rim. That's it. And even still, we, we got some arguments to make here. And, and I guess Sword Dude. I like Sword Dude. Desires. The show can get away with retracing its steps over and over, holding off on sometimes even basic plot developments for multiple episodes at a time, because its characters are interesting enough to carry it. The real brilliant. What if you are interested in those characters? Yeah, um, that, that, that becomes a problem. That's a big problem in Slice of Life shows. If you're not interested or you don't like the characters, it's already just like, bam, because the camera's going to be right in these characters' faces. So... If you're just like, hey, it's sort of spinning its wheels with a bunch of characters I don't like and this plot that's just sort of meandering, you're not going to like it. Characters are interesting enough to carry it. The real brilliance of Return by Death as a concept, in my opinion, is the way it allows us to see multiple sides of this entire cast. By resetting Subaru's relationship with Felt, for instance, we get to see how she reacts to him as someone Rom vouches for and as a total stranger. How she treats someone she sees as a mark versus a legitimate client. Pause. With a me Yep, that's all good. That's all really, really good. Where's the reset point? Expl explain the whole death thing. Well, we've got another 37 minutes. It's it, coming. Does, does brain death count as if he's in a coma for 50 years? Does that count as a death or is he just in there? Uh, he, should, he would just have to be in there. The, t the time stuff is good. Explain the deeper stuff that you're, you're claiming. We, we understand the time stuff. 100% done. You already said that if you're going into it expecting a time stunt, junk, gore, isekai thing, you're going to get it. We understand this. Move on.
Leah, we see how she responds to him first as some know-nothing kid whom she can't help helping, as a random asshole shouting the elf equivalent of the n-word at her in the street, and finally as the selfless hero who swooped in from nowhere and nearly died to save her, asking nothing in return but her name. Of course, that last impression doesn't last, because it's not who Subaru is. It's definitely who he wants to be, who he needs to grow into, but Subaru isn't just another Jesus-kun, and he's barely even a hero when this story begins. Subaru is a hikikomori otaku who never really thought much about anyone but himself back on Earth, who read his share of isekai in his time, and thus expects certain things when an isekai happens to him. Boss. Cute girl, ma I wish we would have gotten more of his home life. We got two, three minutes of him just shopping and then going right into the isekai. We hear so little about his home life. He, we, we, we hear about like his, his basic home life, why he's so good at athletics and stuff like that, but we don't really get a real feel for it. All we need to do is go otaku nerd, hikikomori, and that's his character. We, we don't get as much as we need to, to feel for this character. I wonder if people really like this because they see Subaru as them, like he's supposed to be the stand-in for the audience while also being the main character. Yeah, he's he's an everyman, so that that's that's the appeal of but something like this. But it's even more so, up oh, here comes deeper layers, it's even more so because he recognizes that he's in this type of genre right now, mm -hmm. and he's acting out as if he's in that type of genre. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that there's a level of that cute girl, magic powers, easy life, all wrapped up in a neat little bow and dropped in his lap by Haruhi herself. Unfortunately for him, Lagunica isn't a fantasy video game playground. It's a real-ass country with real-ass problems like crime and racial segregation and a market economy, just like the real-ass country he just left. Oh, and unless he- We barely see any of the racial segregation. He walks into, like, the lizard part of town and they go, hey, get out of here. And that's about it. Otherwise, he's just holed up in a mansion or running away from a giant cat demon. And I think all of these things have real problems. They're just not the big, the big part of the series. Uh, I know Sword Art Online has real problems. That's basically the only one I've seen. <laughs> but I know it has real problems. Mm -hmm. He shapes up, pulls his head out of his ass, learns to read a room, and most importantly, figures out how to understand what people other than him actually want and need. That real ass country is going to keep chewing him up and spitting him out at subtly ironic checkpoints forever. Again, just like the slightly more forgiving world he just left. In ReZero, the isekai fantasy is not an escape from the responsibilities of growing up. It's a wake-up call. The series hammers this point home with the very thing what? that clues Subaru into Pause. the- Pause! If it's a wake-up call, him shouting at, um, what's what's the main girl's name? Oh. Uh, we need to figure this out. I Keep can't. going now. Him shouting at her, going, you owe me, this is some bull, you have no idea what I've went through, you, have, you owe me more than you could ever- He would have gotten punishment for that, he would have gotten reprimanded for that, but he didn't! at all it's not a wake-up call he continues down the straight and narrow just going oh i just need to see her again i'm getting an e in her in my mind eliza El elza airy look it up i am looking it's it killing up. me uh, <laughs> but yeah he would have gotten some kind of recommendation for that but he just legit amelia amelia that's her name i, I knew I, I was gonna say e but yeah it's not a wake-up call point home with the very thing that clues Subaru into the time loop, the fact that he keeps running into the same three goons in the same alley over and over again, something that he chalks up to fate, but which is actually very obviously the product of his own dumb ass not paying enough attention to avoid them. Subaru grows a lot, in very incremental stages, after being subjected to all the horrible, painful consequences of his own inadequacies, and that slow growth, the procedural peeling back of his own worst traits, is the most interesting narrative arc in this series, at least out of what's covered in the show. It's what keeps the story driving forward, not the desire to figure out what happens next, but to see how Subaru will overcome himself and rise to the occasion. Is it's important course? to know- Episode 18, where they just sit down and him and Rim just go over his bad points and good points and blah, blah, blah. All that is was a return to zero. His return to episode one, optimistic, fight hard, 
do whatever I gotta do to win sort of character. There was no change from him going, I gotta prevent Emilia's death in that cavern to here. It's just all just move forward, gotta win. That he's not a bad person. As Puck says many times, Subaru can be inconsiderate, but he's never malicious. He's a creature of impulse for good and bad, a man child as selfish and ignorant as any real kid, but also as playful, naive, and willing to do a good thing just because he feels like it. He's got serious shortcomings as a human being, but they only make his eventual triumphs feel that much more triumphant. ReZero isn't just interested in critiquing the otaku hero archetype, it strives to improve on it, and the way it does- This is very much a Hunter x Hunter argument. Yes, I didn't... I don't... I don't... It's... it's... It's taking what is and tearing it down while improving it. That's the argument for Hunter Hunter. No. He's just a bad character. He's just a bad person. And he does not get his comeuppance. I don't care about him redeeming himself no. when he was such a piece of garbage. Most of the stuff that he does where he succeeds, like taking down the well and everything like that. Well, not taking down the well. Uh, everything, like, as he's looping and trying to figure out exactly what's going on. It's because of the loop. Not because he's try he's figuring things out. Not because he's smart. But because he has all the clues, all the hints. Everything that he needs to put things into place. He has the knowledge of it. He, does, he has the knowledge that other people cannot have. So he's just putting it into place. And if it doesn't work, well, he could just redo it all over again. It's just like, um, when he was, uh, trying to get the, when he was trying to get, uh, somebody to back Amelia, and then it was like, okay, well, I need to take down the white, well, I know you want this, I know you want this, I know you want this, as far as the princesses go, when before he was just begging and groveling and kissing yeah. feet. Okay, he didn't grow as a person, he just gained the knowledge to do that. He wasn't like, I understand this person and what they need, it's I know what this person needs and wants. Yeah. So did he really grow? No, he just got the knowledge and just moved forward with that knowledge. So feels incredibly cathartic when it gets there, but that takes a while. And if you're not paying close attention to the characters and the underlying ideas the show is toying with, if you're just watching to see isekai shenanigans get edgy, those cathartic moments may come a bit too few and far between for your liking. Which is not a knock against anyone who wants to watch a show like that. Sometimes you just don't have the energy to invest, and if you don't, ReZero's a rough time. I, I get it. But I will say that the return ReZero gives on your attention is well worth the investment. There are so many subtleties to how these characters are portrayed, from the way Rem constantly watches Subaru through each loop of the mansion arc because she's suspicious of him, to the whale song buried in the sound effect of Reinhardt's finishing move, a subtle hint at his family history. There's a lot of subtle world building to be found by reading between the lines as well. It's Pause. pretty- The Rem thing, of course, it, it's some weirdo, basically a bum, acting really weird around y'all princess. Of course you're gonna watch him. That's, there's, there's no reason why anybody wouldn't be suspicious. The whale thing is good. But I also don't care. But I, yeah. <laughs> obvious from the way that Amelia reacts to Subaru's nonchalant acceptance of her half-elf nature that she's dealt with some serious systematic and social prejudice in her life, for instance. But if you pay attention, in the scene where she's trying to help the lost little girl, you'll notice that her ear is what spooks the girl and makes her double down on crying. Hey, no wonder she keeps her hair swept in front like that. And yet, despite how horrible it must feel to be judged like a monster by an innocent child based on nothing but her heritage, Emilia responds only with kindness. She is the very definition of pure-hearted, and it's moments like this that make her the best girl in the entire series. Pause. Don't ask. Yes, Amelia is very pure-hearted, and that's literally the only thing I can say about her. She's nothing other than a nice, really nice girl. 
series. Don't at me, Rem Stans. Actually, do. I would relish the opportunity to make my case for why I love Amelia, but this video is going to be pretty hefty as it is, so I'll be saving that for a what's in a waifu down the line. Anyway, there are signs of inequality and social tension all over the city, and in every one of Subaru's interactions with Amelia, but he only notices the sharp divide between haves and have-nots in Lagunica when the plot forces him to go down into the slums and stare it directly in the face. That's like episode three. Yeah. And after that, it's nothing. There is none of that. So is that people shouting at Amelia every now and then? Yeah, but we see. Do we see any other elves or half elves? No, so it's not. just her. So it, wouldn't it be better if she had somebody else to confide in, or if we saw like an aggressive half elf and her group going, "Hey, we don't have to be like this. Look at me." And then wouldn't that be better as opposed to what did the elves even do? I don't remember. May maybe season two, but I don't. I honestly don't remember. But yeah, something like this. We're seeing the slums. Yes, episode three, and then we 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 in the mansion for the rest of it. And the hints are subtle enough that any reader who's only concerned with what will happen to Subaru next will share in that experience. And that's not just the anime trying to sneak in some sly social commentary, though that is part of it. It's crucial to Subaru's character development. Each arc of ReZero's story culminates in our big air quotes at first, hero learning a very basic lesson about how to be a functioning member of society and using that knowledge to not suck just enough to avoid getting everyone around him killed. In the Loot House arc, for instance, Subaru manages to break the cycle and save everyone's lives by paying just the tiniest amount of attention to the world and people around him. And he's only Pause. able to survive. Is that to be lauded? Is that like, is that? Is that a good thing? Is that, was that the whole theme of the conclusion of that arc? I would assume he means that he's grown a little bit because of that. But he had already been showing the ability to pay attention up until that point. Uh, uh yeah. He, he learned about the, the, the whole loop and then just went, okay, I'm going to use this to my advantage. And then I think he calls out Amelia out in the street, just like, all right, I already know her name, so I'm going to just call out to her for a familiarity thing. And then it, that didn't happen. So that's not a good, that, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a definite stretch. He's only able to survive the mansion arc by learning to think about the needs and wants of the people he cares about instead of acting like an incredibly suspicious, self-centered imbecile all the time. He then carries that lesson forward into the fight against the mob beasts in the woods and overcomes the threat without dying for once by putting Rem, Rom, and Amelia ahead of himself. Unfortunately, the six. Okay, it seems very much like you're trying to make a uh, Subaru more by currently making him lesser. So you're you're making it like he, this isn't really who he is. This is just who he wants to portray himself as in this world. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, episode 13, all that crap is who he really is. And then he becomes the person he originally wanted to be by, okay, no, what if this is just who he is? I, I, you haven't really said why he's actually not like this. He's, he's getting better because he's getting knowledge, not because he's growing, because he's getting knowledge. So what in this tells me that Subaru is actually not a good person and a uh, quote-unquote hero? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, it's, 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 it's a very, this is a very looking deep, deep into it to make it something else. Because he already said that you have to look deeper into it to see all this stuff. And he's just looking into it just so, how do I make this deep? And you can do that with anything. You can you can say anything. And as long as it sort of fits together, it's automatically deep. Goes to his head and he buries himself in a deep, deep hole shortly thereafter by failing to listen to literally anything that Amelia tells him to do 
ever. Because in his mind, the fact that she's a powerful mage, an experienced hero, and also one of the five most important and powerful people in the entire country is overshadowed by the fact that she's a pretty girl who he's claimed as his waifu. That toxic, possessive attitude, coupled with his insecurity and anger issues, causes him to view Julius as an arrogant fuckboy who's moving in on his turf when he's actually just a really nice guy who takes his job seriously and is showing Amelia the bare minimum of knightly respect befitting someone of her station. Pause. Episode so, his two lessons already, um, paying attention and putting others ahead of himself, are broken here. Because of his arrogance? She asked him to do one thing to not expose himself and put himself and her at risk, and he doesn't? For what reason? Because he's arrogant? That's not good. That's, that's, at, at, up until this point, we've not seen too much of that. So it just basically comes out of nowhere. Episodes 12 and 13 of this show are 13. painful and frustrating for me to get through in a good way. It's just mm, really no. hard to watch. Absolutely not. She is she is the most cordial person. Just going, please don't use your magic. Don't pick fights. Stay in line. And he does nothing that she politely asks for his and her safety. Not like a, eh, don't do this because I said so. For a reason, don't do this. And he just goes, nah. Because he's arrogant. Because he forgot his two lessons established. Subaru thinking with his dick and making all of these stupid, obvious mistakes that are eerily reminiscent of mistakes that I made when I was younger and more sheltered and thought interests and quirky behaviors were the same thing as a personality and found it easier to be critical of media than myself and most importantly didn't have sufficient respect for other people around me especially the women I see an un there you go there it is that's why it's about he relates to he relates to Subaru and his journey to to better himself to be a better person that's, because that's this is. is what i was boom that's that's what it is and and what what <laughs> that's your own personal thing homie homeboy grew and then he regressed to negative 100 and then he went back up to the zero that he was in episode 1 big whoop he 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 was a zero. He went up to a five by growing from those two lessons, regressed to negative 100, and then goes back up to a three. Who cares? Don't don't go all the way down there. Myself in Subaru, made more uncomfortable still by the fact that I know I didn't see it when the show came out back in 2016. You know, when I was still living with my parents. In 2016, I was unironically in Subaru's corner through this, up until he made a fool of Amelia and hindsight kicked in, and I think that speaks to how good the show's character writing really is. Why wouldn't you be behind Subaru yeah. before this moment? Before episode 12 where he's acting all out of line. He's just trying to save this girl who has nothing to do with anything and who helped a little girl and who's re a really nice person. And he was trying to get not get himself and everybody in the mansion killed. Why would you not be behind him? He's shown no outward, like, malicious traits. You've already said this. So why he's... The only quirk that he's really shown is jealousy with that knight that liked Amelia as well. And he's like, oh, I'm not feeling this dude because, you know, love rival or whatever. And he's even making jokes about it and crap. And he's a little stupid. Other than that, there's no reason why we would not root for him. While it's being intensely critical of selfish male otaku, ReZero manages to represent their mindset authentically enough to be relatable to one of those. Or at least a then barely recovering one. That's not just valuable because it may encourage some self-reflection in people who really need it, it's an example of the show doing its genre right. ReZero, like a lot of other top isekai, isn't just fantasy. Okay, here's the problem with that. He lashed out in such a douchebag way that it makes it unbelievable. So the people that you're talking about would have this self-reflection and crap. They would be behind him and then they would go, I would never do this. You you yourself said it. You watched him. You rooted for him until that moment. And then you went, oh, no. Why? Because in that moment, Subaru separates from yourself. 
So why would these people self-reflect if they no longer see themselves yes. as the Subaru it is now? If, if you're so arrogant and selfish, just going, I'm like Subaru going, I'm not hurting anybody. I'm just speaking the truth by saying she owes me and everything. You're not going to be like, oh, I, I guess I did hurt people. You're going to be like, no, Subaru's a douchebag. And, and that's going to be the end of it. It's, and again, this is a whole internal, if you have this inside of you, you will relate to this person. What if I don't? What if I'm, what if I'm not that? What if I, what if I am that and I don't see myself as that? See, it's dark fantasy, horror in a fantasy setting. And truly great horror seeks to do more than just shock with oceans of gore and big scary monsters. Although, just as an aside, ReZero has some bomb ass monster designs. Like, holy shit guys, holy shit. And the ones we see in the anime are great too. I love the little pupper that turns into a very, very big pupper. The animation on that's incredible. The white whale manages to live up. That is not a good design. That looks like Hound Doom. It sucks. With some like spikes on it, the it's, head. It, if somebody said draw a big scary dog, demon dog, that that would be the, the baseline of the design. Then they would add more stuff to it episodes of hype when we finally get to see it and then there's the friendly critters like my home girl patrash these are some of the dopest monster designs this that looks like a, uh the invisible things in harry potter given like threshold. Uh, threshold yeah given like a and fur it means literally yeah, nothing it looks to me like just like a lizard with a helmet on it's not it's not whatever inside of made in abyss and i am super here for it Wait, I was talking about something, wasn't I? Right. Good horror, psychological horror, tries to identify... Okay. Uh, horror does not need to be psychological to be good. Um, a lot of slasher films are very good horror for their genre. For what they're trying to accomplish. You can't quantify good horror as just it as needs to just psychological, or it, it, it has needs to, to fit into this psychological. Yeah, and horror. it needs to stick with you. That makes no. That's not how horror is. Now, I prefer psychological horror way over slasher stuff, even though uh, some slasher films are some of my favorite horror stuff. But that's not. You don't need that to be good horror. By what its target audience is afraid of, insecure about, and play to those fears. ReZero is very... Final Destination is a series about death. Is it good horror? Because it plays to those fears. Yes or no? Basically, based on what you said, it cannot not be good horror, except four out of those five or six films sucks balls. I'd, I'd have to have a conversation with you about that, but for the most part, I agree. <laughs> that's, a, that's a high number. One and two were good. Yes. Three was the um was that the roller coaster? I believe so. That one was fine. No, it was not. It was fine. Isn't that what we can do this later? Because uh -huh. we, we but anyway, going back to the psychological thing. Um if scary stories to tell in the dark. One it's it's it was the first time in a movie where I was just like, Oh and just sort of like backed up for a second with that big fat lady. Cause I'm like, that's a really good design, that's really scary, and it, it, that's all it was to it. If I just saw that turning the page like in the book, I and I saw that I'm like, Whoa, that's really good. Nothing psychological about that. It's like that's just a really good design. It looks weird. It, and it stuck with me for all this time. D doesn't relate to And I would not call uh, scary stories to tell in the dark psychological in the slightest. No, it's more just like a slasher look out, here it comes sort of thing. But yeah. Like a monster movie. Yeah, you're you're automatically just quantifying psychological e equals good horror. No. Targeted at otaku. And what are otaku scared of? Being bullied, made a fool of, and tormented by people stronger than them. Pause. Be uh, being bullied. He went down that alley each and every time. That was his own fault. Um, being tormented. Uh, he challenged Homeboy to a fight that he knew he couldn't win because Homeboy is a knight, a super strong knight. And, and he made a fool of him, so he made himself a bigger fool. And the, the girl was just a happenstance. He he went down the wrong place. That's, that, that one's more excusable. But every other one, he did that to himself. 
And isn't that a person? What person is not afraid of being bullied or yeah. tormented or it's just not, a, that's not otaku centric. It's just a person. Tormented by people stronger than them, being hurt by people they care about, and seeing those people get hurt in turn. That's a person. And again, weren't you saying that he was a hikikomori uh, otaku and didn't care about people? So if that the person identifies with Subaru and he is exactly that, he does not care about a person. I just got done uh, reading World War Z and boy, not a fan. Yeah, look, that, I thought it would be a whole lot better, especially after the movie. People were like, oh, the movie sucks and the book is really, really good. I, I, I listened to an audio book and I was like, this is fine. I like the um, the style of it, the documentary style of it. And there's another place. To place yeah, yeah. And there's another uh, book called Fantasyland. And I like that one a lot more. Um, anyway, um, there's an otaku there where it's just like, you know, I, I spent all day in my computer, blah, blah, blah. And then my mom's not bringing up my food and I get mad because my mom's not bringing up my food. And then uh, they're probably dead, but whatever. I wanted my Internet. He's That's his number one concern. But why is Suru such a good person? If he's a hikikomori, it, was he that before? What made him a hikikomori? Why does he attach to otaku stuff as opposed to sports and all that and friends and all? What? We don't know too much about his home life, and that's a big problem. In season one. Being rejected. Being alone. Pause. Re all things Human people go through, not just otaku. Human fears! Yes. Why are you implanting this on Otaku? Because it makes this video better. Because it makes you relate to Subaru better. That's that's his point. E Zero has moments that speak to all of these fears in a setting that's supposed to be our shelter from them. And by emphasizing how Subaru's choices lead to those consequences, the looping story structure creates an unnerving implication that maybe it's not just the rest of the world that sucks. These things keep happening to Subaru in part because of Subaru. No, that's only at the final episodes, really. He got bullied because he went down the road alley, okay. But then he recovers from that instantly and beats the sh out of them. In fact, even during that time, he beat the sh out of them. But he recovered from that incident. Um, the torment, that was all his fault when he was changing it to his e person person. He, he was just sitting around the mansion and then he got killed. That had nothing to do with anything that he did. What? Most of the stuff... Most of the stuff was mid-game, which is when it gets bad. And it's just him being a shitty person, leading to shitty choices that get him f***ed up. And that means they'll keep... Ha Amelia would not... It was a very good chance that Amelia would not reject him if he wasn't like... I, I'm coming here even though you told me not to and you owe me and all this blah, 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 blah. If he had just did what she asked, she would have been fine. They would have been fine. Or at least apologized. He showed no remorse about her just going, and then attacks her. Yes. He brought that purely on himself. Subaru in part because of Subaru, and that means they'll keep happening to him forever, no matter where he goes or what he does, so long as he's the same person he is now. Of no, because he was a person, he uh, was a different person in the middle, then he went back to the person that he was, but he won. Yeah, he just did everything right. Because he now has the knowledge. He didn't need to grow or regress as a person in any instance to get the knowledge to further where he wanted to go. He could technically mold people into whatever he wants because he knows what they want. That's very manipulative. Manipulative. Out of that is that if he can change things can get better. Starting from zero, Subaru still has the potential to become a hero. And with infinite time to achieve that potential, it potentially counts for a lot. There is oh, so much more to say about Subaru's character arc. He's a very underrated protagonist, but I'd be making no. the same mistake he does if He's I focus. really bad. He was good. 
then he was bad, and he remained bad, because I'm not going to forget him when he was bad. Yes, no. And I don't need an entire episode of Ram going, no, you aw- you awesome, and I'll love you forever no matter what. Yeah, but I'm trash. Yeah, but you, you have good points. I don't need an entire episode looking at the camera and spelling out his good point. Absolutely not. Just entirely on him. Because it's not just the one great character that makes ReZero great. It's all of them. Literally all of them. No. Every major... Amelia is really good. What else? I cannot say either Ram or Ram are good. They are... Rim is too subservient. It's 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 to an unhealthy degree. It's it's just like what are you doing? I do not understand this. Other than he is a nice person and he saved you, there is no reason why you should be devoted to this person to this level. The owner of the mansion, eh? Eh. Shopkeeper, meh. Puck, meh. Who we talking? Like this dude. Like purple hair dude, like Beatrice. There's a difference between liking and being super deep and and, and good and, characters. Yes, there's plenty of characters that I like that are just like I like them for singular reasons. Shut up. Sometimes give even me, a design. Give me a Monde all up up and down the street because she's got a really big hat. <laughs> and this is no joke. This I is- love Amande's. Her design, dude, I can gush about her so much, but it's so surface level because she's had three scenes. 